The Fujicast is an independent loading zone production. Saturday, 4th of April. The Fujicast. Welcome to the weekend Fujicast, part of the daily. During the week, it's me and Kev as normal, ought to be homeschooled and grammatically correct in these times, Kev and I. And then at the weekend, to keep the wheels turning, and frankly, to preserve my own sanity. So thank you for being part of my personal counselling team. It's just me with a roundup of some of your thoughts. And of course, last weekend, I felt personally about as privileged as I could uh, for the time afforded for a weekend special in two parts, talking to John McCarthy, former Beirut hostage who spent 1,943 days in various forms of isolation, sometimes solitary in a room not much larger than your typical under the stairs cupboard. If you've not heard those episodes, go to 67 and 68 and listen to some of John's parallels about our isolation um, in this time and, and in his fascinating. Today, though, a very, very different episode. We're not especially going to talk about photography, although there are some nods to it here and there. It's a very personal episode and with personally shared thoughts from Kevin's other half, Gemma. As we all live out these uh, weird uh, phenomena times, we thought we'd direct today's show in a, in a very human uh, fashion, human direction, if you like. If you're new to the show, it may seem a rather strange episode, but I tell you what, you're about to learn quite a lot about my co-host and how he and the family, as Gemma and Albie and Rosa, the two dogs, Git and Breezy, and the guinea pigs, how they're all dealing with this. As one of my um, absolute best buddies, I only really have, you know, in man-hug circles too, really, and Kev is definitely one. I'd say that Kev is, is all about authenticity. That's what his photographic work is about. That's pretty much ethically how he is. When you hear him on this show, and if you've ever been fortunate enough to hear him talk to an audience as well, he doesn't sugarcoat stuff. <laughs> you can trust Kev. I know I can trust him. He's the kind of fellow that wears his heart on his sleeve. He certainly doesn't uh, lock it away in a camera bag carefully padded by dividers. He's not that kind of chap. But before this all goes to number 11 on the soppy amplification dial, let me bring in Gemma, a pretty much uncut version of a chat we had earlier on today. Hi Gemma, how are you? All right, and you? Yeah. A bit. Oh, he's Ooh. shouting at me. Who is? He's like, don't squeak the chair, <laughs> talk straight into the microphone, don't whatever. And enjoy yourself. And enjoy yourself and have a good time, yeah, and all those things. <laughs> there we go. Bye, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be outside the door listening. I know he will, because he'll be really scared about what I might say. Oh, right. a man's just w- ridden by at my window on a bike, leading a little Shetland pony. Really? Is, so- that, that's, is he socially distancing from it? <laughs> <laughs> Shall I shout after him? Yeah. Oi, Oi, put your pony away. <laughs> So, Gemma, what's Kev been like to oh. live with during... I mean, we this morning we were saying, how many weeks is it since the, since the kids properly sort of broke up uh, from school for this, this pandemic? And it's about two weeks now, isn't it? 14 days. Yeah, we took ours out a little bit early. So, yeah, about two and a half weeks ours, ours have been home for. Joking apart, Kev's not used to working from the home, is he really? He has the office that he usually works from. Yeah, we just don't come in the living room. We've been really lucky because obviously it hasn't really been bad weather so we've got french doors in the kitchen we just open into the garden the kids have been really good and he's sort of taken over the living room as his domain um the dog jumped up and knocked over (laughs) a cup of coffee into all his plugs this morning Uh, that didn't go down that well not little git it was little git and then yesterday breezy knocked over a bottle of beer so that didn't go down that well either so you know there are hazards oh the kids have been so good she said touching wood they've been we got these guinea pigs, Chubby Cheeks and Marshmallow, and I've been really, for, for, for the last four years, like, oh, my God, these guinea pigs, because it's me that, you know, shovels out the crap and does all of that stuff. Yeah. But these guinea pigs are worth their weight in gold. Why is that? They have just played with them. Have they? For hours. And I, like the guinea pigs now see them coming and like, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> they go and hide. <laughs> Leave me alone. So, yeah, no, the kids have been good as gold. Kev has... Kev has definitely really struggled. I mean, it's scary, you know, well, I don't need to tell you, it's bloody scary when you're the main breadwinner. Yeah. You've worked 12 years on a business and then it's just gone. I know. And you have no idea. Do you talk about plans in, in, in the kitchen of a, an evening, minus glasses of wine? We do, but it is quite tricky because he's all stressed and it's in his head. Mm. And I'm a little bit like, oh, we'll be all right. Be all right. 
you know, we'll just figure it out. I'm I'm a bit more kind of, oh, we'll just live in a cardboard box. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Whereas Kev really worries about it. And all this kind of, you know, all the government saying, oh, you know, we're going to give you some money for this if you're a small business and this and this and this. But it's so, I don't know if you're fi- finding this, it's so random. The information is so random. And you're a bit like, well, I don't know. Will we get that? Will well, I, we get that? Yeah, I was given a little bit of advice from uh, my accountant, which, which was, if you don't need to ask for it right now, just leave it for a few weeks because it'll be just pandemonium at the moment with everybody. I mean, the banks, of course, have softened since their original um, stance, some more than others. But um, so I, I've, I'm playing a, a, a slight, I mean, I can't play the waiting game forever, but I'm playing a slight waiting game because I'm thinking just, you know, I'm waiting for it to soften. Yeah, I, I, I said that to Kev. I said, look, you know, it's year end for the banks and everybody in in April so they're all going to be doing all that tax they've got loads of stuff to process and sort out so it will eventually come out in the wash and you know there is something about everyone being in the same boat yeah you know that you go yeah okay so it's not just us we need to think about it the only thing is is that we're spending an absolute fortune on food <laughs> <laughs> it is ridiculous rose is baking all the time yeah so you know we, every time we we do go out for some shopping it's you know yeast and eggs and flour and all that kind of thing yeah. then we're eating the baking and then we think oh we just have a little treat <laughs> you every, know every hour every hour honestly we're keeping the co-op in malmesbury going i think i tell you it, it, this is like this is like a bake-off um the the last couple of weeks the cake tin has never looked so full <laughs> it's kind of it's an auto it's an auto filling one i know well i i caught myself yesterday a uh, bottle of wine down i have to say in the fridge with my head in the fridge kind of scooping <laughs> out the remains of rosa's bread and butter pudding from the other day with my hands like some kind of urchin and i did think to myself back away how from low the fridge. Have I, how low have i stooped uh, how, honestly it's bad i even did some exercise this morning to try and balance things out uh, on that note, then, how what, what are you doing about exercise, you two? Because now Kev is he's never better mentally, I think, than when he is exercising. Oh yeah, he's amazing. When he really got into it about a year ago, mm. and he 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 literally, I think he got his body fat down to like eighteen percent or I something. Know, yeah. Amazing. Um, but he can't but, go go to the gym, and he don't, I know he said to me the other day, I don't really like exercising. I don't, I don't, I can't really exercise. He has to be at the gym, and of course, he can't be at the moment. Yeah, I just, I actually think he's not in the right headspace to exercise. You know, when you just get a bit sort of, he, he reads a lot of the news, and he and he's you know obviously on various social media and stuff, and I, I just don't think that he he's open to doing that. And and to be fair, I haven't really done anything apart from walk the dogs for the last two weeks. Although I did get his weights from his office the other day and lugged them back to the house, <laughs> like just you know little barbell weight things that he had in the office. And then they've been sat outside for a couple of days. And then yesterday I wrote myself a weights program, right? Celebrated with a bottle of wine. And then today <laughs> and a cake and a cake, yeah, and some bread and butter pudding. And then I just uh, today I actually did a, a, some weights in the garden. But yeah, it was it's funny because. It's quite stressful because I had to say to the kids, like, just don't talk to me for a bit. I'm mm. just give me 20 minutes. Mm. So I went outside, started lifting my weights. And Albie came out and said, Mum, can I play football while you're doing your weights? And I said, yeah, just don't talk to me while I'm doing it. And then he said, oh, Mum, there's a bit of dog poo in the garden. Can you pick <laughs> that up? So I went and picked that up. And I was about to start my weights. And then I was doing something. Then Rosa wanted something. And and I, I have to admit, I did lose it. I was like, oh, my God, you nobody speak to me and i was just finishing up my my 20 minutes or so and kev came out and i was like what he said do you want anything <laughs> i'm going to co-op do you want anything uh he said shall i see if i can find you anything in the new family aisle because <laughs> yes, yes. he hates it so i was really shouting and the neighbors are in the garden i could see him going oh my god Gemma, stop but, but they do have to they, lose it they've only yeah. just moved in haven't they recently yeah bless them yeah yeah oh. so so let's talk about workspaces and um this this is one thing we've been talking a bit about on the show has kev got a workspace is is he is he like other photographers having to sort of find a corner of the room and say this is designated mine this is workplace um yeah so when this all started i put him together a table so i had some old table legs in the shed so i got my drill out and um drilled together some um, scaffolding planks people don't know th- this part of you by the way Gemma that y- y- you are a build you can build stuff I am when when we when DIY there, girl that's yeah. right when there was plumbing um emergency a week and a bit ago you fixed it 
Kev held the light. Yes. Yeah. 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 So he was he was saying, oh, I, need, I really need a table. Um because he said, I'm going to bring my computer home from work. And stupid me thinking, you know, a computer or a laptop, not re- not remembering that his super computer of whatever it is, is a, the size of a small pony and also goes uh, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I built him. So basically in our front room, we've got a, a, a sash window that looks out onto the pavement and the road. Yep. And his table that I built him is in front of that um, with the sofa behind it. So all the sofas and everything are slightly smooshed forward. Yep. Um, and he sits. Yeah. And he, this is this is where he works and he hasn't done a whole lot of photography but i'm hoping you know as time goes on he'll pick up the camera a bit more you know i think it's a bit like the exercise thing i don't think the creative juices are particularly flowing at the moment in the time of trying to figure out how to rescue the business and because some people have turned this into a real sort of um documenting uh, time haven't they and, and kev was saying to me the other day just I've only taken about three or four frames. Yeah, and I think I'm. I read an article in the Huffington Post, I think, on you know productivity and 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 just don't stress about it. It's fine because it will it will come or it won't. But sort of trying to force it, um, you know, if you're really inspired and you're you're in a really good mental space and you're going to do it, then brill. But I think for a lot of people, it's such a different life. Doing things slower, you know, taking your time is. We're just not used to that, are we? No. Now, this isn't a, a, some, somebody's right because they do it one way thing, point, whatever I'm trying to say. It's a Saturday. I think I'm slowing down mentally yeah. in my head. Um, but we, we sort of said, right, we're going we're gonna to take that. We, we read this somewhere. Take the advice of starting your day in clothes by a certain time, getting up, going through the process of it, not living a pajama life, which I know a lot of people are. How have you done that? How, how have you organised your day? Uh, we, we've got, we've moved to Spanish time, so um, <laughs> that means beer, we, beer by ten. Yeah, <laughs> so we uh, we get up when we get up, yep. um, and sometimes that will be you know seven, and sometimes it will be ten, and it, re- it massively depends. Yeah, um, and then we try we we. we always get dressed so no pajama days and then have some breakfast and then we i try to do something in you know between sort of 10 and 1 whatever that is whether it's paint a fence or do something with the kids or just some something so that i've achieved something have some lunch and then half two till four siesta time (laughs) for me (laughs) um so i go upstairs i might listen to a podcast i might read my book the kids know it's siesta time. They can do they play with the guinea pigs or they'll watch a film or yeah. they'll, you know, whatever. Rosa has been doing a little bit of homework off her own bat. Albie plays this football. And then we go for dog walk about four. And then we so there is a structure. There's, there's a structure. There's a structure. There's definitely a structure every day. And it does really help. And sometimes we'll mix it up. Might go for a dog walk at 12. But pretty much, yeah, there's, yeah. there's a structure there. And that, that makes... That does make a huge difference, and and I think it's made a huge difference. Kev being able to structure his day around recording this with you, yeah. That's so it, it's yeah. kind of like two o'clock is is yeah. you know don't bother dad time. <laughs> <laughs> Although that uh, we we might be cha- well, I think it'll continue being two o'clock, but we'll we'll record it the day before so it can go out in the morning. That's one thing we've talked about because oh, uh, yeah. I, I found myself working into the evenings now, and and the the episode goes out at the wrong time. But that's by the by, you don't want to hear that. Are you quite, how, how are you doing with the whole work-life balance? Because I, I did, during one of our rows the other day, uh, said to Kev, you know, you say to me all the time, I want to spend more time with the kids. I'm missing growing the, them growing up. You know, I'm, I'm always at work, blah, blah, blah. But he spends a lot of time in front of his computer here. Um, I think the work-life balance is wrong at the moment. I might be sharing that with Kev then. I'm spending far too long in front of a computer. Um, do you think? Do you think that's just because that's your comfort zone? Almost, yeah. I bury, I bury my head in my work. There's that. That that must yeah. be said. Um, I've really. You weren't talking about the amount of time that Kev spends, um, and I know he does because he sends me messages when he when he's read facts and figures. But oh. I've tried to limit now the amount of time that um, I look at the news. And I want I want to look at the news when it suits me. I've turned my notifications off. I don't want the BBC or CNN or whoever telling me that there's some new breaking news. I've turned all that that stuff off mm. because I want to consume news when I want to consume it. Kev has this um, habit, and he, he used to do it when he was really scared of flying, where mm. he'll research everything, all the facts and figures, yeah. and then he'll and then he'll tell you them. Um, so then it makes him feel better, like. 
you know, he'll tell you that you're more likely to die of a donkey dropping on your head than in a plane crash or something. You know, he'll 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 do that. And he's doing that with this and it's his control thing. Mm. So he's very sort of facts and figures. But obviously, depends how you read things. If you if you if you search out all the positive press, you'll feel a lot better if you can search out all the really really negative stuff um which obviously is a lot easier to find at the moment you're going to feel worse and i i have to say because i'm not on any social media um never have been Mm. and that is a godsend at a time like this Mm. because i i only i listen to the government update um or read the headlines of the government update in the afternoon and that's it that's it don't read anything else nothing how long do you two think it'll go on? You must have had this this conversation a, um, a million times o- over your beer and various yeah. cakes and yeah. Uh, I think um, well, I'm I'm glass half full. So I was talking to my friend Joseph about this the other day, and we were saying yeah, end of May, end of May to kind of get a bit back to normal, whatever that is but you know for things to be lifted starting to lift and starting to go in the right direction if you ask kev next january (laughs) i can't actually think past the easter holidays in my head i'm right this so we had two weeks up to the easter holidays okay so that's kind of that was a real adjustment time i did no homeschooling Mm. we did nothing we just kind of got used to the life Two weeks of holiday, so I'm going to try and do some fun stuff. I promise the kids I put the tent up in the garden and that kind of thing. Um, you may have found a new place for Kev to stay. Yeah, do you know what? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Kev, have, if, you, if you're listening back to this, sorry, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there have been days where, yeah. <laughs> um, and then and then after that, yeah, who knows? But I'm, I'm, I'm on the I, – I have to be on the more positive side. I mean, some days – I don't know how you feel. I'm like a roller coaster. One day I'll get up and I'll be like, yeah, I've got this. I can do this. This is fine. Morning kids, morning Kev. It's all good. And then other days I'll wake up and I'll just think, not this again. Like I can't, I can't do this anymore. And at the house, the walls feel like they're closing in um, and you have to be really really mentally strong and we're comparatively lucky really our two families Gemma, because we have a we have a backyard mm. we can come out we can kick a ball around um you can kick a guinea pig around <laughs> <laughs> i didn't really say that to anybody that's saying what <laughs> but you, well, we are we are we've we've got that space i can't imagine what this um, i've been hosting uh, a news feed and um in israel for example they're not allowed to walk more than 100 meters from their home now i don't know how that works if you're too far away from the shops no idea but but 100 meters from your home you know a lot of a lot of the people um living in cities of course don't have yards no no well we, we, i do try really hard to you know you, you've got to count your blessings even stuff like we walked past um on our dog walk yesterday somebody's back garden and they, they had like three kids in the back garden who were sort of i don't know maybe like six months 18 months and two yeah. and i was like you know i remember <laughs> I remember those times in normal times, and that is tough, having small kids that, you know, you've got to entertain all the time and who are a danger to themselves and toddling around. That's exhausting. So there are loads of different things that, you know, for us, uh, you know, we're really, really lucky. And I think getting Kev's head around the business and how he'll provide for the family is the thing that will, you know, eventually stop the, you know, or negate some of the anxiety and some of the more sort of challenging days because he definitely has has found it tough you're much more positive than him though neil have you found it all right um i don't know whether all right is a word i would attach to it (laughs) um (laughs) but but yeah i've i've I've, do you know what i've filled my days yeah i I, I take my hat off to you for that yeah and, and maybe that's a bad thing because it's meant i haven't worked as much on my business as i should have done but i thought well you know, I'm going to spend a week on a business next week with where well, I've got some mentoring and stuff. But but a week on the business next week, a week after that, I'm going to I'm going to work on my YouTube channel. The week after that, and that's that's the way I've thought about it. A, a structure is good to say this week is the week I do X, mm. and then to bend a little bit with it because of course the daily podcast takes a little bit of time, of course. Um, but uh, and yeah, I'm an early riser as you know as well. So mm-hmm. for me, five o'clock, I'm up and about. I've been trying to make Kev. I'm trying to get him into meditation. He's not really listening to me. Um, oh, me and you both. <laughs> but, really not. But, no, I think he thinks I've gone a bit <coughs> with getting him to watch Wim Hof's breathing technique. 
Um, but honestly, and this is going to sound odd, but it's really worked for me. In the morning, I get up, five o'clock, I'm into my, my office space here. Uh, the first thing I, I do after ablutions, obviously, is in, into, the, uh, into the breathing technique, then I'm out. I'm out for my exercise. I like going out because early because I don't feel so anxious about people thinking, what are you doing? Where are you going? You shouldn't be out. So I, I do that, you know. And so by the, by the time it gets to 7.30, um, I'm ready to, to answer e- emails and stuff. And, yeah. Well, and and that's, uh, uh, that's been a rescuing factor for me, has been getting up early. Uh, you, you really have to take, I think, um, solace in whatever works. For Kev, it's yeah. watching back-to-back detectors. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I know and sometimes i felt really guilty about you know i said what are you doing kev on messenger so i'm watching detectress so what are you doing i'm editing the podcast yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah i don't feel like the smart ass that's always working or something because because for me it's the that's my rescue really it is yeah, that's normally kev's rescue and i had i did say to him why don't you set up um because he before this happened he uh, was going to set up you know a bit more of a a structured sort of youtube bit in his yeah. studio yes. you know that 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 kind of was there a bit more permanently so that he could get into into doing some more switch the lights pieces. on and go with it yeah yeah and i said to him why don't you go and do that because his studio is is just him it's a it's a it's a room he doesn't have to walk past anyone else there's no one else around he's got his own loo you know it's it's no it's different perfect. from being perfect. at home I, know. It's perfect. I said why don't you go and do that and then you know maybe do a week of of working on your youtube but he's done a lot on his website um that's really mainly what he's been working on as well as the podcast the work he's been doing on the the website is going to play pay dividends of course because um when it all starts to churn and chug along again um people will want photographers i I absolutely you know we we found out very much that we're not key workers and it does remind me if if, have you ever read a restaurant at the end of the universe by the way by Mm, douglas no no okay well there's a scene in in restaurant at the end of the universe where they've uh, basically taken all the telephone sanitizers and hairdressers and they put them on big spaceships and they've sent them out to go and find another planet to live on because they've all been told that this one's going to finish or something. And it's five years into the flight when they notice the doctors and nurses and so on actually didn't join them in the evacuation fleet. Strangely, they'd stayed behind. Uh, a humorous nod to the fact that the planet had too many account execs, insurance salesmen and, and management consultants. And, <laughs> and that's what I felt a bit like, actually, because I, I've, I've felt, well, I'm, I'm not a key worker, but I do believe that coming out the other side, there will be work for photographers. I think you, you get out, of, we talked about this the other day, you get out of bed price has got to change. Uh, and I think you've, you've got to be mobile on that price i think if you're you're saying this is what i'm going to charge i'm not sure that's the way it's going to work for a little while i'm really not do you think that um as far as wedding photography goes often when you have a a recession or a downturn Mm. people get made redundant and Mm. then they spend their redundancy money or Mm. they spend their time on Mm. they decide they're going to have a career change and they you know and they get into photography and they they like buying the gear and they go on the training courses and then they get into doing weddings and so you have a bit of a a sort of surge of wedding photographers could you see that happening after this or do you think that because maybe it's going to take a long time for the economy to get back to people being able to afford to get married that they'll um, you know how do you think it's going to play out i think there'll be more people trying to well there's two parts to this i think there'll be more people going for a hustle yeah i think there'll be a few more photographers around and this is why i'm i'm going to change my website as well we, we were talking about this only yesterday on the show um with rebecca faith um that i've got to go back to where i was before which was a bit of a jack of all trades instead of thinking right i'm hard-nosed wedding photographer that's what i do that's my specialist subject i'm not saying this is right or wrong by the way but but i feel that if i can do commercial headshots portraits weddings that's going to be the way and filming filming weddings as well that if you can do lots of things photographically then you're going to stay afloat i think if i this is what i believe if i just went out there and tried to be a wedding photographer again only that i think it would be a lot harder and i think it is going to be a bit harder on the recession point by the way i had my best two years after the banking crisis yeah well that's when kev set up yeah and he was just absolutely flying i think there was a an article about him in a magazine like how this guy bucked the 
you know, buck the recession to, yeah. to build a successful business. So, yeah, maybe that's a good point. I, I think people want normality and they crave normality. And I, I've spoken to two prospective couples for next year over the last couple of weeks that said, we just want to live life again. We want to do things normally. We want to have, to have something to look forward to. Now, I know that's a bit head in sand because there is going to be a recession. People are losing their jobs and, uh, and that's dreadful. But there will be people that want to get back into mainstream life. Yeah. Do you think it would be hard, though, to work, you know, if you're going to have to change your pricing to, yeah. you know, whatever it needs to be flexibly? Yeah. It's going to be hard, hey? You know, you guys, you and Kev are, are exceptional at what you do, and it's and you put in a huge amount of work, and it's not a, you know, just get up with a camera and take a few no, pictures. And, no. you know, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. Will it be hard to, to, to do it for, for less? For less? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. But... You know, I'm often reminded by by Sam. <laughs> she will say yeah. to me, "I'll get I'll get a, a a quote in for maybe some commercial work or something," and I'll look at it and say, "I'm not doing it for that much." And Sam will remind me, as a teacher, what she gets paid and mm-hmm. how much effort she would have to uh, make to get the exact same amount of money as what I'm quoting at her at that moment. Now, I know that's that's a bit simplistic as an argument, but but she's right and. Um, Look, I, I can I can either I'll, I'll hold firm on some pricing. I know Kev's going to hold firm on some pricing, but I'm also going to be flexible as well in terms of some of the packages I offer, because I can either be flexible and get the business, or or I can be really hard nosed about it and watch other people get the business. And I don't like the latter option. No, Are you do you think you'll do um, more sort of education and things like that? I don't know. I'm uh, yeah. See, Kev's Kev's much better set up to do that. He's much better set up to do that because of his SEO and all that background he has. Mm. This will, there'll never be a better time for Kev to actually be working at that side of his business because, um, look, if there are loads of people that, that are out for the hustle, then um, they'll want to know that sort of information. Of course, you run the risk, don't you, of cutting your nose off to spite your own face, don't you? But Yeah, that's the, yeah that is the tricky thing. But I think education, I think Kev is really good at education. Yeah. The things that I'd like him to to do that, I'd, lo- I'd love to do more events like bigger events like the x weddings thing but brilliant you know because i think that is um if you could put i don't know a couple of things on a year two three things on a year then i think you know that that had the integrity that of x weddings that had you know the fun and the interest and Mm. and the the social and all of that kind of thing i think you know having been to the the year anniversary of of the podcast i think there's definitely mileage in doing that um Mm. And it's and it's and it's something to that that we can both get involved with and and that we we enjoy doing yeah. well. You and I enjoy doing it, Neil, don't we? Kev did as well. <laughs> he did. I know he. I know he loved it. Do you, and I'm, I'm going to ask one more question because I, I I can hear him almost tapping on the door. So, darling, are you still talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you think you guys are, are good to come out the other side? I know that you've had your wobbles in terms of of talking about business and stuff i don't mean i don't mean the two of you personally but i know you've had your wobbles talking about business etc do you think yeah do you know what we're gonna be all right we're gonna do this yeah i've always i've always i've always thought we'll be fine i've always known we'll be fine um we we always start from the position of right so we're not gonna you know get divorced or you know run away or do anything different so so if we're not if we're not you know the the world's not going to end so if that's the case then working back from that bit like kev editing upside down or whatever it is working back from that you know what do we need to do to get to the place we want to be and so yeah i think it will be fine i think that there's a lot more thinking that kev needs to do about how to put the business in the best as you were saying in the best possible position when we do come out of this to to be busy and to make the money that we need um i'm perfectly happy to live off tesco value beans and rose's homemade bread for you know a year once it all comes back round again yeah, and you can stick your head into the 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 fridge and uh slop out a bit more bread pudding oh seriously i'm so annoyed (laughs) because it's lent right and i was like right for lent this year 40 days i'm gonna i'm giving up bread cheese and wine oh yeah and i did really well for the first two and a half weeks of lent yes and i was really proud of myself and then this happened 
and now I'm literally just eating. I don't. Do you remember the bit from the Bridget Jones film where she opens the fridge and sort of scrapes the mold off the cheese? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Takes a bite and then she's eating <laughs> muesli with the spoon out of the packet, just dry. That's me. That's me. <laughs> it's, it's you'll be. You'll. Yeah. I don't know. I think we're. I think we're going to be okay. That's. That could be blind faith, Gemma. But I. I know. We'll be right. Of course, we'll be all right. I, know, I mean, I know Kev's a hard worker. I know he's a grafter. He's a hard worker. He's got far more integrity than me i think when it comes to some stuff and um i just know he'll do it and all this conversations i have with with him where he says do you know what i'm gonna go and be a postman i know he doesn't want to do that and i know i know he he loves being in a creative industry and i i know he'll make it work he, of course he'll make it work yeah what was the what, what was he gonna become the other day oh a teacher teacher yeah, yeah, yeah he was going to yeah. go teacher training he'd be good at the actual teaching yeah. but can you imagine him in the politics of teaching i know it, you know in the in the you know you've got to do you know meet these targets blah mm. blah blah he would he just absolutely hate that i just i honestly think i don't think he's particularly i don't think he's employable you're right in that he'd be amazing at being a teacher because that's why people flock to him to listen to him speak and mentor um, so you're absolutely right about that. But there's a big difference between te- teaching in the school and, and that kind of mentoring, I think. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, he'd be like the old fashioned. My dad was a teacher. And, and, and uh, you know, in those days, you could lob a board rubber at a kid's head. Yeah. I think Kev, I think Kev would struggle. D- during the war, remember those yeah. glory days when you could weaponize the board rubber? Yeah. Oh, God, no, let's not go back to those days. But the Victorian teaching ways, no, but, uh, no. but yeah. No, but I think that's... That's, yeah, I think that's the generation Kev comes from. So I think yeah. maybe teaching's out, being a postman's out because he can't get up that early. No. Um, so he's, he's not got... He could go back to being, you know, doing some development work, which he used to do when he worked at Deutsche Bank. Mm. Uh, yeah. He was writing an app only the other day. Listen, I, I can hear cake calling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it must be yeah. It must be cake o'clock. It is cake o'clock, Neil. It is cake o'clock. Thank you for being, um, being part of this special um, episode. So I, I interrupted you as you were about to leave a really good closing statement because I know we're we're hanging on your words now, Gemma. Give us some hope. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. It will pass, and it will be all right in the end. And if it's not all right, it's not the end. The Fuji Cast is an independent loading zone production. Email the show with your questions and words of wisdom to click at fujicast.co.uk. Email any complaints and political nonsense to our wives, who will deal with your comments in their own good time and in their own good way.